Good morning. I'm Mayor Tommy Roberts. Welcome back to the Mayor's Table. My guest this morning is City Manager Rob Mays. Rob, you've been with us several times. It's good to have you back. Yeah, and you've had a f few other guests on some important topics, but we have. Uh, it's nice to be back with you this morning. Rob, let's talk about annexations. Okay. City of Farmington has undertaken two annexation projects in the last two or three years, and uh, most recently uh, we've completed one for about 235 acres in the southeast part of our community. Mm -hmm. Back in 2014, we annexed about 889 acres in the southwest portion of the Farmington area. I want to talk very briefly about uh, the concept of annexation. Yeah. Uh, why does the municipality consider annexation? Yeah, well, you know, um, growth is inevitable. and. Uh, one of the most important responsibilities the city has is to responsibly manage growth, responsibly manage the extension of its services and its service territory to citizens that re re reside there or to be sure there's ample opportunity for businesses and industrial areas to, to maintain a well-balanced uh, um, tax base. So that, that's really an annexation becomes one of the, the, the key tools that's used uh, to manage that growth. There are three different mechanisms by which territory can be annexed, and we've utilized two of those in these two annexations within the last two to three years. The uh, annexation that occurred in 2014 in the southwest part of our, our city area was done under the petition method, and the petition method is simply um, people or entities want to be annexed and so they petitioned the local government to be annexed and in order for the petition method to to work there have to be at least 51 percent of the property owners seeking or approving of being annexed. The second of these annexations uh, which was recently completed in a part of the southeast part of our community was down, done by what is known as a boundary commission uh, process. And generally, you use the boundary commission process when the petition method uh, doesn't work. And in this case, uh, we attempted to get the approval of 51% of the property owners in this southeast segment of our community, uh, but were unsuccessful in doing that. And so we then utilized the boundary commission method. And uh, the boundary commission method simply provides that if the applicant, in this case the city of Farmington, can demonstrate that the land to be annexed is contiguous with existing city limits, and if basic services can be provided to that area by the city, then the Boundary Commission, which is a state agency, can uh, authorize the annexation, and that's what occurred here. Um, that kind of explains the two methods of annexation we've utilized. I want to talk uh, fairly briefly about these uh, two annexation projects separately. Uh, let's talk about first the one that occurred in 2014, uh, the 888 acres in the southwest part of our community. What was the impetus for the city seeking to annex that area? Well, frankly, and both of these are, are, are quite similar in terms of the, the types of uh, land and land uses that are out there. But it really, it boils down to, to 14 years of, of planning. Back in 2002, the city adopted the, its last version of the, of the Farmington uh, Comprehensive Plan, which identified six um, high value or high, high priority strategic areas for annexation, again, in order to, to maintain uh, the type of growth and, and be prepared for the future that the city needs to do. Both of these particular properties, the, I think the, the, the key impetus for them being included in that strategic identification was the ability to maintain um, industrial and, and properties available for businesses and, and commercial activity. Um, the fact is that the way our tax structure is, is, is uh, designed, we get very little revenue from residential properties or any property tax of any, any kind. So all the services that are, that are offered uh, to our citizens from public safety to quality of life to parks and recreation to libraries, 
Um, all those are primarily funded through gross receipts taxes that takes place on commercial property. So a city must maintain an adequate availability of land for businesses to grow, to expand, and to move into our area. And both the, the, the 888 acres that you're referring to that we annexed in 2014 in the southwest corner of the city, uh, there was a lot of industrial development already there. In fact, uh, areas where we were already providing services, in fact, a lot of land that we actually own. So our, our Bluffview um, combined cycle natural gas plant for our electric utilities sits down there, our water wastewater treatment, um, a lot of property that the hospital owned, and then a lot of vacant land that has at least been identified as a, a very likely place for industrial park or, or future development. So uh, that, that really was the priority for that area. And in that southwest segment of the community, we had a property owner with a considerable acreage position who really wants to create an industrial park. Yeah. And that was uh, one of the reasons why we, we considered seriously that annexation project. And I think we'll continue to have discussions with that individual uh, as time goes on about yeah. development of that park well, area. Well, that's kind of a hybrid of that form of annexation. You've got the petition method, which can either be inst instituted, frankly, by property owners, or the city itself can, can, can institute the conversation with property owners. In this case, kind of a combination of you start having discussions with property owners and and then reach out to others. Yeah. So it's a I think it's important to note that with each one of these annexation projects, there was not a significant residential component existing that has been brought into the city. Certainly in the southwest part of the uh, city in that annexation effort, uh, there, there were a handful of residential properties. But in the southeast annexation, uh, I, I don't know that there were even any uh, residential properties. If there were, there was just a handful of those. It's primary, primarily industrial and commercial. Yeah. Um, in each one of these annexations, there's a, an, an assessment done preliminarily to, to completing the annexation process about the costs and benefits, both short-term and long-term. So we want to have an assurance that if we're annexing property, we're not going to be uh, providing services that cost us extremely more than the benefits to be derived from having those properties in the city limits. So if you would, uh, j just talk generally about the cost-benefit analysis. Well, in order to annex, regardless of which method you do, you really have to, you're making a commitment to serve those citizens. You serve those citizens with roads, with quality of life projects, public safety, um, and eventually utilities. If, so um, there's a lot of cost associated with, with providing our basic services that we offer. So you, you, would, you would not want to annex something that would, would bring in a tremendous additional burden to the rest of the citizens. You want to annex things that, that make sense and ult ultimately hopefully create win-win scenarios for both the property owners and the, and the city and the general uh, population. But it really boils down to, to how we govern and how we, how we pay for the services that we all find beneficial and, and essential. Um, as, as the city limits move out, the neighboring areas out, right outside of our contiguous uh, boundaries begin to, to use the services and frankly are using those services without, without paying for them. And so there's, a, there's kind of a, a, a dual uh, responsibility, I think, to, to, to pay for the services that, that you have available to you and uh, to, uh, to be a part of the city. I've been in local government as an elected official for about 15 years now, and I think I've been involved in three annexations over that 15-year period. And bear in mind, there was a four-year gap where I wasn't in invo involved. So we're, over the last 19 to 20 years, I can think of three annexation projects. So the city is not aggressive about going out and bringing additional properties in uh, to our city limits. It's done on a kind of a strategic analysis basis yeah. where it makes sense in a fiscal way uh, to bring additional properties into the city limits. So uh, do, you, do you know of any other plans uh, for annexations in the near term? Um, nothing eminent and, and, and just more to your point, really it, it absolutely is strategic. Keep in mind these were part of a, of a planned event identified 14 years ago as being strategically important to the long-term vision of what, what the future of Farmington needs to be. They, they certainly were not random or, or careless. They, they were highly studied and even then we, we took 14 years 
to, to accomplish both of these. And in both cases, if you look at the southwest, I think we're going to have a map up for the screen for our viewers, this corner. We already had annexed areas further you know, to the east of this. This is just bringing it down to a very natural border of Andrea Drive and down to Highway 64. And same thing over here. Uh, we already had, had our corporate boundaries extended quite a bit further to the west. This is just bringing them down to the natural, natural boundaries there of the Navajo Nation and the Vista Highway. So they, they usually make sense with, with, with you know, common sense boundaries and, and again, trying to create that win-win. So no, we don't have anything imminent on the horizon. Uh, we certainly continue to evaluate, particularly to the, the west. There's a lot of open area to the west of Farmington that, that could be developed into you know, further economic opportunity. And we, we typically would take our, um, our cues from the property owners as to how we can partner with property owners to provide the services they need to, to be successful with their property. Rob, I think I've accomplished my goal here this morning of just in general informing our viewers about these more recent annexation activities. I think sometimes people read generally about annexation, probably don't fully understand uh, what it is that goes into the decision to, to annex property. And I think we've accomplished that goal of providing that framework for our viewers this morning. So thank you for being here with me on this segment. And I want to thank all of you for joining us once again on the Mayor's Table. And we'll look forward to seeing you again next Monday.